blood. By now we've established that without blood cells, your body couldn't get oxygen and without oxygen, your cells would die and that's the end of the story. We've also discussed blood in a lot of the different body systems that we have gone over in the human body units. But let's do a quick recap of blood to remind us, okay? So blood carries oxygen from your lungs to your body cell. It also carries carbon dioxide from your cells to your lungs so you can exhale it. It carries waste products from cells to your kidneys so they can be removed through urination. And materials that are not waste products are called nutrients, and your blood helps transfer nutrients to body cells. And of course, without blood, we would not be able to fight infections or heal any wounds, and then we would get more infections and we would not survive. Now you may not have considered it, but blood is actually a complex tissue. It has several parts. It is made up of four different components, including plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The biggest percentage of blood is plasma, and this is the liquid part of your blood. Plasma is actually made up of 90% water and then 10% of dissolved minerals. Plasma is what carries nutrients, glucose, vitamins, and minerals to your body. Proteins in plasma help regulate the amount of water in the blood and fight disease, and then they also interact with platelets to form blood clots. Red blood cells take up oxygen in the lungs and deliver it to cells elsewhere in the body. They are produced in the red bone marrow and under a microscope, they kind of look like a thumbprint cookie. They can bend and twist super easily. And this flexibility is what allows them to squeeze through narrow capillaries. Red blood cells also contain hemoglobin, which is the iron containing protein that binds chemically to oxygen molecules. And this is what makes red blood cells bright red. Red blood cells have a lifespan of about 120 days. And every second, about 2 million red blood cells in your body die. Fortunately for you, your bone marrow produces about 2 million red blood cells. So at about the same rate. White blood cells are also produced in bone marrow, and these are the guys that fight the disease in your body. As soon as they recognize bacteria, they alert the body that there's a foreign substance, and all the other white blood cells will start producing chemicals to fight the invader by surrounding it and killing the organism. White blood cells differ from red blood cells in that for every 1,000 red blood cells, there's only about one white blood cell. And white blood cells are actually much larger than red blood cells. And while red blood cells live about 120 days, most white blood cells can live for several months and some even live for years. Then there's platelets and these are part of the blood and these are important to form blood clots. When a blood vessel is cut, these platelets collect and stick to the vessel at the site of the wound. And then they start releasing a chemical chain reaction that produces a protein, which kind of weaves a little net of tiny fibers across the cut in the blood vessel. And this will start trapping the blood cells so they can't leave your body. As more and more platelets and blood cells become trapped in this net, a blood clot forms. And when a blood clot forms and it dries, then it is called a scab. Here is a better image so you can get an idea of the shapes and the different elements in blood. Now, everybody has chemical markers on their red blood cells, and these chemical markers determine your blood type. This is important to know so you can safely receive blood if you ever need it during a transfusion. And it's also good to know if you ever give blood so that way your blood can be labeled and be given safely to somebody who needs it. There are four major types of blood, A, B, AB, and O. Now, if for example, your blood type is A, then your red blood cells will have an A marker. If you were to need a blood transfusion and were given the blood of type B, which had red blood cells that have the B marker, then your plasma would actually recognize the B blood cells as foreign, meaning they would say, uh-uh, these don't belong in this body. And they would make these cells start clumping together. And this could be a very dangerous situation and cause clotting if this occurred. 
So it's always important to know your blood type in case of a medical emergency. Now, as your blood travels through these tiny capillaries throughout your entire body, there is a little bit of fluid that leaks out and it kind of leaks out into the walls of the capillary into the surrounding tissue. And this is okay because this tissue actually needs these materials. When the cells are done with that fluid, the fluid then moves into kind of like your body's drainage system, which is called the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a network of vessels that return the fluid to your bloodstream. It's kind of like the gutters on your house returning rain to the ground after a rainstorm. Now, when fluid is inside the lymphatic system, it is called lymph. And this lymph moves slowly through the system because there is no pumping system. As lymph slowly flows through the system, it passes through lymph nodes, which are kind of like a filter, and they are an extra backup system that traps bacteria and other disease-causing microorganisms. So you might know when your body is fighting an infection and collecting this bacteria that's causing the infection because your lymph nodes got swollen and enlarged. Once you start feeling better again, you'll notice that the lymph nodes start reducing in size. All right, let's take a break here and it's time for you to show what you know.